Uh, good evening and welcome to Borough President Adams' Uniform Land Use Review Procedure Public Hearing. As the Governor's emergency order authorizing virtual public meetings was rescinded on June 25th, the Borough President's Office has resumed in-person hearings in accordance with the Open Meetings Law. Tonight, we are conducting these proceedings simultaneously at Borough Hall and remotely via WebEx. This hearing is being recorded to comply with the Public Law for Transparency and will be available on Borough President Adams' One Brooklyn channel on YouTube. Brooklyn Borough Hall will be open this evening to those who wish to speak or listen to the hearing. To testify in person, you must complete a speaker slip and be in the courtroom when your name is called. Remarks will be limited to three minutes. Please note that attendees will be required to practice social distancing and all persons over the age of two who are medically able to tolerate a face covering will be required to wear one, regardless of vaccination status. Online viewers may join the hearing via the link and password on the following slide. To testify, please message your request to all panelists in the WebEx chat. Remarks will be limited to three minutes. Additional comments and longer testimony may be sent to askeric at brooklynbp.nyc.gov for Borough President Adams' consideration. Please call the item and let's begin. Calendar item number one. 210480ZMK, 210481ZSK, 210482ZRK, 210483HAK, 210484PPK. These applications submitted by the New York City Department of Housing, Preservation and Development and MassBeth Manager LLC for land use actions to redevelop the former Greenpoint Hospital campus, occupying an entire block bounded by Jackson Street and Debevoir Kingsland and MassBeth Avenues in Brooklyn Community District 1. One, a zoning map amend amendment to change the project area from R6 to R7-2 and R7-2 slash C24. Two, a zoning text amendment to create a mandatory inclusionary housing area coterminous with the project area. Three, a special permit to establish a large scale general development to modify regulations governing distance between buildings, height, and setbacks on this site. Four, urban development action area designation, urban development action area project designation, and disposition of lot one comprising 146,105 square feet. Five, approval to modify a specified community facility use for the disposition of lot 10 to permit and continue general community facility uses. The requested actions would facilitate a phased mixed use complex involving the construction of two new 14 and 18 story buildings, the enlargement of two existing ones, and the replacement of a 200 bed homeless shelter. The resulting development would yield 553 units of affordable and senior housing augmented by community facility use, uses and light retail. The project would establish connections among four privately owned residences on the site and ensure the continued operation of the Greenpoint Renaissance Center. Community Board 1 approved this application on July 12th, 2021. We remind web viewers who wish to testify that you must message your request to all panelists in the WebEx chat. Remarks will be limited to three minutes. We will call speakers after the presentation and question and answer session. Would Aaron Buchanan, the representative for this application, please state your name for the record and present the application. Hi, good evening. My name is Aaron Buchanan from the Department of Housing, Preservation and Development. And do we have the slides to pull up? Great, thank you. All right, so I'm here tonight with members of the development team to present the Cooper Park Commons ULERP application. This long awaited project proposes to redevelop a large partially vacant city on site in East Williamsburg into new buildings, all affordable to extremely low and low income New Yorkers. The proposal includes two new affordable housing buildings, one renovated affordable housing building for low income seniors, the renovation and on site relocation of the existing homeless shelter community facility and commercial space, and publicly accessible open space serving the future tenants and nearby residents. Next slide. Silver Park Commons was designated to St. Nick's Alliance, Hudson Companies, and Project Renewal 
under HPD's 2017 request for expressions of interest for the redevelopment of the Greenpoint Hospital campus. This ULERP application for this project was certified on June 21st and HPD along with the sponsor MassBeth Manager LLC are the applicants. As previously mentioned, this ULERP application is seeking approvals for a UDAP designation and project approval and the disposition of city owned property, a disposition approval to permit general community facility use on block 2885 lot 10, a zoning map amendment, a zoning text amendment, and a large scale special permit. Next slide. The project area is a one block area between Massbeth Avenue, Kingsland Avenue, Jackson Street, and Double Boys Avenue in Community District 1. A formerly mapped portion of Skillman Avenue runs through the center of the block, and much of the surrounding area includes a wide range of land uses, including one and two family residences elevator buildings, local retail, manufacturing uses, and public open spaces. Directly to the east and north of the project area is a 700 unit New York City Housing Authority Cooper Park houses. Commercial uses in the area are located along Kingsland Avenue and Metropolitan Avenue and include food stores, coffee shops, medical offices, laundromats, delis, and restaurants. The blocks to the east of Cooper Park houses contain a concentration of industrial and manufacturing uses that are part of the North, Indo North Brooklyn Industrial Business Zone and public facility uses in the area include the existing 200 bed Barbara Kleinman residence. Open space resources in the area include Cooper Park, a 6.4 acre mapped public park, which is directly to the south of the site and green thumb gardens in the area include the Red Shed Garden immediately west of the project area and Orient Grove Garden located south of the project area and Frost Playground is located nearby on the Cooper Park Houses campus. The area is served by public transit, including the Graham Avenue stop on the L subway line about four blocks from the site and the B24 bus that runs along Kingsland Avenue. On the next slide. So overall, the project proposes the redevelopment of block 2885 into two new buildings and the renovation of two existing buildings. The proposed project will contain approximately 553 100% affordable rental units, plus three units for superintendents and the on-site replacement of the 200 bed homeless shelter. The ground floors will include retail and community facility space proposed to use for a cafe, health clinic, job and workforce training center and the senior center. And additional amenities in and surrounding the buildings will include bike storage, fitness rooms, laundry rooms, resident recreation and lounge rooms, social service offices, private courtyards and terraces for tenants and approximately 1.6 acres of landscaped public open spaces. Uh, now I'll turn it over to Frank Wang from St. Nick's to provide an overview of the team's work um, and then a more detailed presentation of the building's designs and programming. Thank you very much, Erin. Um, you have the next slide. Um, so uh, St. Nick's Alliance, I, I'm here. Uh, I'd like to, uh, on behalf of Michael Rochford, the executive director, Joseph Robles, our board chair in the St. Nick's Alliance board. We are founded in the neighborhood in 1975 and our board continues to be substantially uh, local residents and business owners uh, running the organization. Um, we, along with Hudson Companies, uh, we're delighted to be able to be um, designated to uh, develop the site because we have been working with community organizations on a community plan for the past 40 years to the site since the hospital was closed, the original hospital was closed. Hudson, we have developed over 2,600 units of affordable housing in this neighborhood uh, here. Hudson Companies, our, um, our partner, has developed affordable market rate housing. In fact, uh, small homes across Cooper Park, across from the site, back in the day, as well as uh, they have the organizational commitment and force, you know, foresight to work and develop this project for that community benefit. And we'll, we'll talk further about the homeless shelter, but our partner, Project Renewal, is really one of the original 
uh, organizations to focus on the issue of homeless housing and services in the city of New York. They manage both private, they manage uh, shelters as well as permanent affordable housing. And they will be operating the shelter once in operation. So I'd like to turn it over to Aaron uh, Kaufman if he's able uh, to run through the rest of the project, if we could uh, have the next slide. Um, How about now, can you hear me uh, now? Yes. Oh my God, okay. amazing. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Frank. Uh, and I also wanna, I wanna thank Aaron Buchanan because uh, two Aaron's are always better than one. Um, but I want to thank Erin and uh, her colleague Lynn Zhang uh, at Brooklyn Planning at HPD for their incredible partnership on this project uh, over the last few years, alongside certainly the Brooklyn Office of uh, City Planning as well for getting us here. Um, this has been no small effort, and we really appreciate all the work that and dedication that all of you have shown uh, on the public side. So thank you. Um, yeah, and thank you, Frank, uh, of course, for being a wonderful partner to Hudson over the years as well. Um, the project mission, I mean, Cooper Park Commons, are, you know, the plan is to create a, a new hub uh, for the residents of Greenpoint and East Williamsburg. The goal is that we will not only work with St. Nick's and of course, Project Renewal, but in fact, engage other uh, local organizations who have been there for years, certainly been there before we have, um, that have laid the foundation for the redevelopment of the site. Uh, you know, we are just the next step. I, we are not, this, this development team, and certainly Hudson, is not uh, the, the first, last, and only. We are, uh, we are coming in at the end of a decade, several decades long advocacy to redevelop the site and are just latest stewards of the site. So I, I want to acknowledge everyone who has been working tirelessly to get us here today into this Euler process and hopefully eventually to construction loan closing. Um, Within, uh, within the community and various organizations that helped make this happen over what I believe has been at least 30 years. Um, so you all deserve a pat on the back and we're, we're just here to hopefully carry that torch. Um, and with that, it informs the way we are designing this project. We want it to serve as a central campus. We want it to serve as a vibrant junction between Cooper Har Park Houses, Cooper Park, and of course the Graham Avenue Commercial Corridor, transit and the surrounding residential areas. As Aaron alluded, uh, it is 100% affordable housing. We're going up to 80% AMI. We're providing some ground floor uh, critical amenities uh, that, that have been mentioned. We'll mention them again. Of course, a 1.6 acre open space, which we'll talk about. And then of course, replacing the existing shelter with a brand new state-of-the-art facility, the Barbara Kleiman. Next slide, please. So you can see here the site. Uh, I'm sorry, was there a question? Okay, um, we'll just start uh, at the 12 o'clock and work clockwise with the existing power plant. Uh, with a, there's, there's quite a, lot, a tall smokestack that's currently there. Um, and then uh, going uh, around the clock, you have uh, neighborhood women's houses developed by St. Nick's. Of course, going down to the four or five o'clock, uh, you have the nurse's residence, which will be the Barbara Climate facility, um, the open space, that will be redeveloped into the, the largest building of the four, which is we call uh, building two right now, um, which is over 300 units of affordable housing and construction. St. Nick's headquarters, of course, uh, on the corner, um, and then working back up to the other neighborhood women's houses. And then right in the middle, of course, is the, is the main hospital building, which not only anchors the whole campus, but anchored our design in terms of um, the, both the, the typology of the exterior, as well as the color um, and the, the ways in which it interacted with the new and existing buildings. So you can see here, it's the entire, it's the orange area. If you can see the orange line within the yellow trapezoid-ish box, um, that, that is what we are focusing on in this application. Next slide, please. So again, uh, now we can start with numbers here. So uh, you can see building one will become a 200 bed homeless shelter uh, run by Project Renewal and St. Nick's. Uh, building two is gonna be a 310 unit affordable housing development with retail and community facilities on the ground floor. Those little uh, you know, uh, crosshatch things on the top aren't just there for decoration, that's solar panels, which we're gonna get into on our sustainability slide. Uh, but certainly these are going to be state of the art, sustainable, um, developments, um, not just affordable housing, but housing that is gonna be good for the environment, good for the neighborhood. 
Building three will be the hospital center transformed into 106 units of senior affordable housing. Um, so with, with adaptive reuse like building one and then building four will be a new building that sits and it joins into building three of 137 units of affordable housing plus community facility. And then we will we'll talk about the ways in which the site itself uh, opens up to the existing neighborhood, not closes off. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about all the connections, certainly that's anchored by Skillman Avenue, but then also the allays that we will have in running north and south into the site uh, at various points between one and two, building two in St. Nick's, and of course, building four on either side. Well, I'm sorry, building four on the west side. Next slide. So here's a bedroom mix. I think it's important that we you know, discuss sort of like who, who benefits, who, who's going to live here. And we wanted to have a, a balance um, we have over, we have about 40% of the units are, are family units um, in the non in the non shelter building. So building two, three, and four is what we focus on here in terms of our unit mix. Um, uh, you know, building two and four, I think, run the standard distribution you see within an HPD Ella um, building of new construction. Building three runs uh, with sort of what we see in senior housing in terms of usually 50-50 or somewhere near that between studios and one bedrooms. Each building will have a super that lives there rent free um, and uh, a nice distribution between the sizes that could basically have between one and in some cases, six people per apartment with a total of 556 units developed. Next slide, please. Not just who benefits family size, but obviously what does it mean to be uh, affordable here? And of course, I think uh, to, you know, certainly St. Nick's credit, but also uh, Councilman Reynoso um, and, and feedback from CB1 and Greg and various others, we came up with this proposal, which we think is, a, is an emblematic way of reflecting the neighborhood and allows for the maximum amount of neighborhood access and eligibility into these buildings. So you can see a number of units between 30 and 80% AMI distributed. Um, certainly, yes, you know, fewer on the very low income side, but yes, there are some, which is better than zero, um, a number at 50 and then 60 and 80 um, and on, in building two, and then similar distribution, but a little more skewed to the 60s in building four, um, just because you know, we had to balance out um, income distributions and being able to support the buildings. Um, and of course, this is assuming 100% AMI for a family of three in 2021, which is 102,400. As we all know, this will change. This changes not only with household size, but will also change year to year um, because this is determined uh, by HUD for the New York City metropolitan area. Uh, in building three, we'll have project-based section eight vouchers. I think that, that, must, be, that must be stated. Uh, rents will be restricted to 30% of their income. So, so the goal there is that we get PBVs for all 107 units. Um, in that particular building. Next slide. And people always like to say, well, what does that mean percentage wise? Well, of course we have to talk about what does that mean out of your pocket? Cause that is obviously critical. So we don't have to go through each one here, but you can see that the rents range between $412 uh, for a studio at 30% AMI level, all the way up to 1311 for that same studio at 80% and then down to 2,200 for a three bedroom at 80% AMI. Um, you know, 32% of these units are below 50% of AMI. And of course, 30% of the units are set aside for formerly homeless households. Um, but again, this, and of course, these are all subject to rent stabilization. Um, and we could certainly talk more about this uh, in your questions if you wish. Next slide, please. And what does that mean in terms of your household income? Because of course, that's the next thing is how, how do I how do I make this work? So again, we won't we won't go through this, but it's important to see sort of this is the maximum income level. So 50% AMI is the highest income you can earn um, for let's just take a 50% AMI household of three. So in this case, that's 53,900. Um, HPD and HDC set a, an income band usually down to 47% AMI in this particular case. So someone earning 40%, 47% AMI um, will still be eligible. And that gives a range in this case of about $3,000. Um, 
And I know it's not, not perfect, uh, but it's certainly better because uh, it, it does allow for a, a band of eligibility. And I know certain things can be done at HPD um, in terms of household size, linking to a, a, uh, the bedroom unit, which you know obviously depends on the inhabitants and the age of the inhabitants and things of that nature. But um, this is the maximum income you can earn in each of these cells here. Um, so this is just for your review. Next slide, please. I'll turn it back over to Frank, I believe, for lottery outreach. Yes, so St. Nick's Alliance has been uh, developing and, and uh, uh, managing and providing a housing for our 45 uh, years. So we have been marketing and providing thousands of units of housing in North Brooklyn over that time. We are going to be the ones that will be in leading the outreach as well as the marketing and lease up of these units. So our approach, we are a, what's HPD, a housing ambassador, which means our staff are trained to go out and uh, reach out and, and, and connect with residents to understand the process and um, to apply for housing. And that includes, um, this, you know, publishing in a variety of newspapers to make sure that those residents that were not normally apprised will know of the availability. We're going to work with, you know, because of our 46 years in the community, we're going to be working closely with civic groups, local associations, school PTAs. We work very closely with the adjacent Cooper Park Houses Resident Council, as well as the local senior centers to ensure all the residents of NYCHA and beyond understand the availability and, and we're also going to be uh, conducting town hall meetings to inform the community and answer questions about the application process and working with elected officials on the process. So, um, you know, inevitably people need to understand about Housing Connect. This will go through the city's HPD Housing Connect process, but it's about educating people and getting them into that process early so they can take advantage not only of this project, but we're dedicated to understanding projects throughout the community that are available. Next slide. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Paul Woody, uh, Vice President of Real Estate at Project Renewal. And um, I will uh, be talking about the shelter uh, that's in building one. Um, it's good to be with everybody. And um, we're very excited to be part of this project and on this great team. Um, so. Uh, we're excited to be taking this next step tonight. Um, so, okay, so the, the homeless shelter um, uh, will be a 200 bed shelter serving single uh, adult men uh, from employment and mental health populations. Um, we, we, Project Renewal, will operate um, uh, the shelter in close collaboration with St. Nick's Alliance. And the two of us will uh, sort of own the building long term. Um, we are one of the reasons we're excited about this project is that um, you know we we really love when we get to be in purpose built shelters. Um, a lot of the shelters that we're in are um, sort of uh, makeshift um, buildings that have been sort of a casually repositioned as a shelter. But we've really had the opportunity to um, have an input in the design for this one, and um, we have tried to be thoughtful about the needs of the community of our clients and of our staff to make this, you know, the best shelter possible. Um, uh, Project Renewal uh, has been around for a long term and we really pride ourselves on providing wraparound um, uh, case management services for our clients. Uh, we provide ho health, homes and jobs. And um, in a way the shelter sort of embodies all of those things uh, uh, that we strive to in our mission. Um, we'll, have, we'll have case management, of course, we're gonna have a, um, a health clinic uh, in the sub-basement for, um, uh, for our clients in, our, in the shelter. Um, uh, nurses and doctors will visit and, and provide healthcare for the clients. Um, there's gonna be an employment counseling um, center in, in, the, in the shelter as well. Um, we pride ourselves on our occupational therapy services and there'll be space for occupational therapy in this building. Um, of course, uh, the goal is to make this a temporary shelter um, and to get people into permanent housing as soon as possible. So we'll have housing placement services on site um, 
and they will be dedicated outdoor space just for clients. Um, there's a sort of a little bit of a raised terrace in the back that you can see on this slide um, for, for clients to socialize on. Um, of course, safety is a, is a priority for us. Um, so we, we have a um, director of security um, who works with the um, security guards on site and um, we've installed a security system and um, uh, camera system in the, in the facility to make um, things safe for everybody. Um, we uh, are dedicated to working with the community. I think that we've um, uh, proved ourselves over the last um, year or so. We're, we, um, we will form a community advisory board uh, with regular meetings to get community feedback. Uh, we'll, we'll share a good neighbor policy that we, we, we use for all of our shelters. And we're, we're dedicated to keeping um, connected and communication with the community uh, for this project. Let me just interject one thing. Um, the, currently, the shelter operating in the old main hospital building, the Barbara Kleinman uh, facility, is operated by the city of New York itself. Um, there will be, once this new modern facility and, and the nurses' residence is uniquely, you know, it's a good structure for this kind of facility, there will be a transition, but Project Renewal uh, will be then the operator and there will be a transition out. Uh, and then the, uh, the other buildings and, and Aaron will talk more, will then be able to be developed uh, as future phases. So this becomes the first phase of the question. I think we can move to the next slide, Paul. Let's... So the proposed ground floor uses, um, thank you all, by the way. Um, uh, we will have a community facility, will be in the health clinic, Paul alluded to, uh, I'm sorry. Um, it, the, there'll be a community facility, health clinic, uh, hopefully a nonprofit based um, in the Southeast corner of building two. We plan on having a business workforce development center in the middle of building two and then a, a retail cafe uh, to sort of activate the, the, the sidewalk on Maspeth in the Southwest corner. Um, of building two, and then we'll have uh, some sort of community facility in building four uh, that will accommodate uh, older adults uh, and do older adult programming as well. Next slide, please. So just expanding on that, uh, you know, we see the health clinic being like a sizable uh, service to the community, a 5,000 square foot walk-in clinic. We had some discussions with the large operator. Unfortunately, that didn't work out, but we've been, we've been having some good productive discussions with uh, several other operators uh, who are committed to this area um, and, run, and run great services. Um, St. Nick's is gonna operate um, the Business Workforce Development Center uh, that's 2,500 square feet and then the 1,500 square foot cafe um, for everyone around the area and certainly people you know, coming downstairs. And then in building four, we'll have a 5,000 square foot older adult center, um, uh, which is which is relocating the existing NYCHA Cooper Park houses uh, across the street into into our area, and then expand on those services and, and provide modernized amenities, certainly in a brand new building, which will, I think, be very attractive to people in the area. Next slide. Uh, so all buildings will be built to lead gold and or pass without standards, specifically the the uh, adaptive reuse preservation buildings will be lead gold. The new buildings will be passive house. Um, I will say that um, we recently won uh, the NYSERDA Buildings of Excellence Award, which is round two. We won the top award for that and then uh, won a blue ribbon award um, for from the American Institute of Architects in New York um, for our design, which we are going to show you in just a second. Um, we have solar arrays on two buildings that I alluded to before, outdoor courtyards and playgrounds playrooms, lounges, you can, you can see the list down here, certainly bike storage uh, and fitness centers and laundry. So, you know, the goal is to, is to activate every corner of the building that we can for the residents as well, like this is a resident amenity, amenity too, not only providing uh, connections from for the neighborhood to come through the space, but also for the, the residents who will live there in terms of safe places to play, work out, um, take care of whatever they need, um, and then hopefully just recreate, uh, and maybe, you know, put their feet up. Um, so it's really going to be an incredible uh, opportunity for those who get a chance to live in here. Next slide. Uh, community benefits, we're, we're very proud of this. I, 
Frank, are you taking this one? I think so. No, go right ahead. I, I'm sorry. Um, so, you know, we're gonna, we have a local hiring program that, that St. Nick's has been running for years. We're supporting that program. Um, we, are, we have N MWB hiring goals. Um, and of course, we're going to be uh, bound by Hire NYC. This means usually at least 30% of the contracts will be available to MWBEs. Um, we are going to have a commitment to local hiring of the of local subs too, not just providing employment opportunities for for people in the neighborhood, but trying to engage with local area subs to bring them in, spend locally, you know, for us. To, to put that contract into place and have that multiplier effect um, for, for local businesses. That certainly makes a lot of sense. So you have a nice double win here, um, both in people and in businesses. Uh, and then that extends to the property maintenance, the landscape once the buildings are done, retail and certainly social services. Uh, we will have public open space throughout the campus, as I've mentioned before. We've talked about accessibility and connectivity. This does mean safety. We will have more activation of these spaces and certainly better than what it is now with fencing and, and even a, there's even a, you know, the drop down gate and security guard uh, booth that, that will be gone. Um, but we'll, what we will put in its place will be modern, safe, well lit, um, you know, obviously with cameras. Um, and then of course, uh, the development team has pledged to actually invest in Cooper Park itself across the street um, and, and make some improvements there. It's not just about what we do, it's about what we do in the neighborhood. And so this is our pledge to invest in such a wonderful amenity like Cooper Park to the south. Next slide. So sustainability, again, uh, new buildings built to passive house standard, which as of right now is the highest standard that is out there that is you know, commercially, commercially applicable. Um, Hudson has actually built the largest passive house building in the world to date, which is the Cornell Tech dorm on Roosevelt Island. We are going to be passed by Sendero Verde shortly, uh, LNM and Jonathan Rose, but in the meantime, we still hold the title. So we know what we're doing. Um, the team knows what they're doing when it comes to passive house. Uh, and of course, uh, a lead gold standard for the existing buildings. So the emissions are gonna be low. We always think about asthma rates, um, certainly in, in, in neighborhoods, certainly near NYCHA, higher asthma rates. So where we can provide lower emissions from buildings, we will do that. Um, and then we're gonna have an expensive uh, neighborhood stormwater retention system, of course. We, no one likes CSOs. We certainly wanna do our part. Um, we will be putting in bioswales, specifically on Skillman Avenue. Uh, they'll be pitched to a line of rain gardens with trees. Um, the sidewalk along Maspeth um, has potential for capturing stormwater in tree pits. Uh, we need to work that out with, uh, in conjunction with city DOT. But the overall site detention requirements, um, we've engaged with the civil engineer. Uh, they, will, they will be a significant improvement over uh, what, was current, what was originally constructed. And um, you know they will, of course, will, will exceed uh, DOT guidance and, and DEP guidance for for stormwater retention. Next slide. So here's our beautiful pictures. Um, this is a view looking west from Skillman Avenue. Uh, you can see the, the existing the existing hospital on the right, uh, the nurses' residence on your immediate far left, and of course the new building two in that sort of jagged form um, on going down the perspective uh, to your left side. And this is all new paving, new seating, new trees. You can see even the new investments in the in building three, even prior to you know taking it over. Uh, the goal here is to bring a safe, beautiful connection into this neighborhood. Next slide. This is looking north from the main hospital building. Basically, if you're standing on Maspeth Avenue, so Cooper Park is here south. So you can see here, we've, we've tried to, to engage the beautiful hospital building, make sure that you can, it's a visual element as you're walking down Maspeth. Maspeth is gonna be a wide sidewalk, so there's a lot of visual connection there. And we try to do our best to just balance maximizing affordable housing opportunities and uh, holding sacred the existing beautiful building that exists there now. So we think we've done a, a very good job personally um, in balancing those two. Next slide. Here's an Axon uh, aerial view, you know, kind of hovering over Cooper Park. So you can see the, the, the bulk that we are looking at. Yes, your I know goes to the 18th story on in building two, that's okay. We're, 
we we get it. It's certainly something we've talked about a lot and have gotten a lot of feedback on. Um, but it does actually create a nice boundary that that actually brings the park to the people in a way for for those who are living there. And and we think this is a, a, a make a really nice. I mean, for what what's currently there now, which is nothing, into something that is that is both attractive. Um, and in some ways, well, you know, it, we want it to stand out. We want it to stand out. This is this is sustainable, affordable housing in public-private development, and this is what we can do here. And it's beautiful, and it's accessible, and it's affordable. So um, you, that that that's sort of the tall point there. And then you can see the bulk of Building Four behind the existing hospital as well. Next slide. Another axon just from the northeast side. So this is basically hovering over. Uh, Cooper Park houses um, again. Just another another uh, bulk uh, opportunity here in terms of the relationship to the other building and the park. Next slide. Okay. This this might be our last. Yes, and so uh, and then here's you know from the park itself in terms of what it what the what it looks like as it transitions down from the from the higher point of Building Two down to the um, existing uh, Building One nurses residence. Um, so if you're viewing from the from the grass in the park, I believe. That might be it. I do. Oh, I'm sorry. We do have one more. I apologize. This is the, the looking southeast from Jackson. Yes, this is this is the um, uh, women's residence uh, northwest corner of the block. So that's building four there. That's the front of building four, the new building four to your left as well. And then this is within the women's residence. It's like one of the quads that we are going to create. Uh, so what you're looking at there is the eastern facade of Building Four, um, working nicely with the existing buildings uh, that St. Nick's developed into a beautiful, uh, you know, a nice like human scale level park within our development. So the two developments kind of working together in a nice way. And you can see here is our uh, you know tentative timeline. Um, we're here today. Of course, this should be July twenty yeah, July twenty sixth. So you know we're we're hoping for a, a December twenty one ULIP approval. Um, I know Brian Shea is here from DHS to talk about Building One, but Building One we hope to uh, begin construction sometime in the you know uh, early parts or early mid parts of twenty twenty two, with Building Two closely following thereafter with HPD and HDC, and then we'll move on from there. But we're certainly excited to get started. Next slide. We can take questions I, here. Yeah, and I, I also just want to say, uh, Max, my, my colleague Max Zarin uh, has been leading this entire process in a way that I could not fulfill. So I wanted to give a shout out to him. He can't make it tonight. He's very sad about that, uh, but he has been our our project leader and has done a magnificent job. So I want to. Uh, give a shout out to him in absentia and also to my colleague, Laura Kim, who has been making tons of changes on the fly to this presentation. Um, and uh, we, we thank her for her both her speed and her excellence uh, in accuracy in, in portraying this wonderful project of which we are so proud. So thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure and we look forward to taking your questions. Thank you so much. Um, I have a, a few questions, some of which I think you've addressed, but I want to read them into the record uh, and then we may have some, some follow ups. Um, regarding the affordable housing units, what is the qualifying income for prospective households based on household size, the anticipated rents based on the number of bedrooms, and the distribution of units by bedroom size? I think you went over that on a couple of earlier slides. Um, Ina, did you have a question to add to that? Um, yes. So uh, regarding um, the various affordable units, um, which may be uh, affordable pursuant to different programs, such as the mandatory inclusionary housing program. Uh, could you please clarify uh, the affordability terms for uh, the various uh, types of units and um, what mechanism guarantees that those units will remain affordable? Uh, this is Frank. I, I'm, I think Aaron Buchanan uh, can speak as well, but I believe that uh, the rezoning, this will become a mandatory inclusionary um, overlay so um, um, the units that will be permanently affordable will be down will be the lower um, percentage AMIs it will be um, um, I can get back on the specific numbers to the uh, to the board and um, you know uh, I just want to say that 
you know, St. Nick's Alliance in our 46 years, we did actually the first tax credit project in Brooklyn and we refinanced all our projects and we've done a lot of them with inclusionary to make all of as many of them as possible permanently affordable. So the regulatory agreement for this um, will be uh, one thing, but um, the plan is for St. Nick's to be the managing member uh, once the project is in operation. And our intent is that all of these are gonna be permanently affordable and continue that way. And I can add quickly that because it is a public site, there will be an additional 15% permanent requirement on top of MIH. So in addition to um, all of the, the goals that the team has to uh, make this permanent affordability, there is that extra 15% um, required because it is a, a publicly owned site. Great, thank you. Um, uh, this one I think you addressed as well, but uh, given community concerns regarding displacement and the prevalence of rent burdened households, please identify what marketing strategies would be used in the tenant selection process in order to ensure the highest level of participation from community district one, especially those who are rent burdened or at risk of displacement. Would such a marketing strategy start off with a financial literacy campaign to assist area residents in becoming lottery eligible? Yeah, so uh, a yes, the answer is it would, and that is actually an ongoing process that St. Nick's does as a regular part of what we do in Community Board 1. So we would just widen that um, about a year before we would start the marketing for this and, um, and get that out so we could get as many people in a position to be able to be chosen and, and successfully tenanted. Thank you. Um, it's Borough President Adams' policy to promote renewable energy resources focused on advancing a sustainable future in Brooklyn. It's also his policy to promote stormwater retention practices. Uh, what consideration has been given, possibly in cooperation with the DEP, the Mayor's Office of Sustainability, NYSERDA or NYPA, to incorporating blue, green, or white roofs in installing solar panels, wind turbines, and or roof-mounted grid-connected batteries? And I'll also add um, rain gardens for stormwater retention. Yeah, so we, we alluded to the fact that we, we will have, um, we will have bioswales along Skillman Avenue. Um, uh, every roof will be at least white, but of course we have solar panels on uh, buildings two and four. We are uh, in the middle of a review now with our civil engineer and city DOT in terms of whether or not we can uh, put bioswales on Maspeth, uh, but there's certainly an opportunity there to, to bring in more trees and create a rain garden effect. Um, we could do that on the LA's as well, the north-south LA's between St. Nick's building, St. Nick's uh, headquarters in building two and building one in building two uh, as a start. Um, and then we'll have, we'll have on-site detention tanks as well um, pursuant to, um, to DEP's requirements. And we can certainly provide a, a longer, more exhaustive list to the borough president's office of, of any sustainable features. So Aaron, given the height of the buildings, did you give any consideration to those smaller micro wind turbines? Uh, hi, Richard. Yes. Um, well, we, we, they don't throw off the energy we want them to. Um, I know Blue Sea has had some, some success. Blue Sea Development has had some success on a building, um, but we were a little concerned that it would be um, not enough bang for the, for the buck. Um, although we, I think all the, the team staunchly believes in, in wind, wind power and we can certainly look at it again, but we've, we, we really did have our consultant turn over every stone. Um, and of course, you know, we have to be sensitive to the fact that a lot of this is being developed with, with public dollars. Um, so, so where we may have to move in a different direction, even if it, it certainly stands for something great, if, if not actually on, you know, do like some real contribution to onsite generation, we have to, you know, balance that out. But um, we did look at it and uh, can certainly, uh, you know, share with our share with you our notes. And Aaron, since you've been a leader with solar roof panels, we've learned of newer technology for solar facades. And given yeah. that you have nothing on the south side for a lot of your frontage because of the park, 
I wonder if you've looked into that to get even additional benefits. Um, I, I, you know, I can. Defer, I wasn't in that conversation about about the solar facade. I mean, the problem with the solar fa the, the facade tiles is that they just they aren't as efficient in generating power um, the way the way an actual like panel array would on the roof. Um, so I know that that's been an issue. That's been a criticism in the past. Thankfully, everything has gotten better in terms of solar technology. Um, can I loop back with you on that just to make sure we? I I don't want to say anything. Um, you know, to uh, <laughs> uh, that may have not been yeah. discussed in the team that I wasn't a part of. So let me let me loop back with you on yeah, that one, absolutely. Richard. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and again, the information we've read of articles that actually started coming out of Germany, I believe. Okay. Yep. That 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 doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, I th I think one one problem though with solar pan with solar exterior tiles, you don't have a lot of color. Uh, choices usually comes in a dark color, which makes sense because you want to you want to attract the ultraviolet light and radiation. And you know this was a situation where we really wanted to have the buildings work with the existing buildings, the hospital and the nurses' residence. I know that played a role in how we in, in what our color scheme certainly was, and that may have um, put the solar panel tiles out of contention. But I will circle back with you, or the team will for sure. Thank you. Um, we remind web viewers who wish to testify that you must message your request to all panelists in the WebEx chat. Remarks are limited to three minutes. We'll now call speakers on this item. Okay. All right. We can okay. And with, uh, we see no speakers on this item. Um, Richard, would you like to close the item and call a second? Calendar item one is closed. Calendar item number two. Two zero zero. <laughs> Two zero zero three one four CMK two zero zero three one five DRK. These applications submitted by eight twenty four Metropolitan Avenue owner LLC pursuant to sections one nine seven C and two zero one of the New York City Charter for Land Use Actions, affecting an eighteen thousand eight hundred and thirty five square foot property near the intersection of Bushwick and Metropolitan Avenues. The proposed zoning map amendment would change portions of the project area from C82 and R6B districts to R6B slash C24, R7A and R7A slash C24. The proposed zoning text amendment would designate a mandatory inclusionary housing area coterminous with the project area. The requested actions are intended to facilitate an eight story, 34,000 square foot development with 36 dwelling units and 7,000 square feet of commercial uses in Brooklyn Community District 1. Approximately 11 units would be affordable to households earning an average of 80% AMI pursuant to the MIH option two. Community Board one approved this application on July 12, 2021. Again, we remind web viewers who wish to testify that you must message your request to all panelists in the WebEx chat. Remarks will be limited to three minutes. We will call speakers after the presentation and question and answer session. Would Lisa Orantia, the representative for this application, <laughs> Please state your name for the record and present the application. Hi, my name is Lisa Orantia, Land Use Counsel from Ackerman LLP. Thank you for inviting us tonight to present the application. Um, with me is Michael Kaversky for the applicant, 824 Metropolitan Avenue Owner LLC. Um, Lauren George, our community liaison from Constantinople and Boulogne and Frank Lang from St. Nick's Alliance. Um, if you could pull up the application, please. Thank you. This is an application for a rezoning and a mapping of a mandatory inclusionary housing area to facilitate the development of an eight story mixed use building with 34 dwelling units, including nine affordable units and space for local retail. The applicant is a Brooklyn resident whose family has been in the business of developing and managing real estate since 2001, and which now consists of approximately 200 units in East Williamsburg. He also owns and operates with his sisters, a vegan restaurant called Modern Love on Union Avenue. He brought the development site in 2017 with the idea of creating a new building 
with affordable housing, and that maintains neighborhood diversity. Next slide, please. The project area is located at the southeast corner of Metropolitan a Avenue and Bushwick Avenue. It's at the western edge of the project area is the 66-foot um, wide Metropolitan Avenue and Bushwick Avenue. And the western edge, I'm sorry, the eastern edge of the project area is the 60-foot wide Orient Avenue uh, that meets Metropolitan Avenue in front of the site. Next, please. The surrounding area is mostly residential, mixed commercial and residential, and some non-conforming manufacturing uses. There are only two uh, automotive uses in the C82 district. There are no semi-industrial uses. Uh, the gas station on the southwest corner of Metropolitan and Bushwick is now closed, uh, and a few former semi-industrial uses have now been converted. Next, please. This slide identifies the taller six to nine story buildings just two blocks away to the northeast and southeast. Next, please. The development site is comprised of an open lot for small truck and car parking and a three story residence. The rezoning area includes another three story building and the rezoning only affects a small portion of its rear yard um, and a gas station that is expected to continue operating. Next slide. The proposed map and text amendments shown on this slide would extend the R7A district that exists to the south and to the west to establish a continuous zoning designation that allows new housing, including affordable housing. It also extends the adjoining C24 overlay to the edge of Bushwick Avenue to allow for commercial uses. The easternmost slot would no longer be split by district boundaries. The moderate in increase in bulk and density and the introduction of residential use is supported by the light and air provided at an intersection of three streets, access to public transportation, and a commercial overlay to provide for local retail needs. Next, please. The proposed development is a new eight-story mixed-use building with 34 dwelling units, including nine affordable units. In response to the community's interest in family-sized units, we were able to add two three-bedroom units. There will also be 7,000 square feet for local retail on the ground floor that can be divided into multiple independent establishments. The proposed building will have setbacks above the six story, 15 feet from the street and 25 feet from the adjoining R6B district boundary. And the footprint of the top two stories is only, 20, uh, only 2,500 square feet in floor area. There will not be any on-site accessory. Next slide. Uh, the owner will elect to develop the building under option one instead of option two as initially proposed. Approximately nine apartments will be set aside for households earning 60% AMI with at least 10% of the floor area at 40% AMI. And St. Nick's Alliance will be the administering agent for the affordable housing units. Next, please. Some of the features included in the new building will be high performance windows for better insulation and resulting energy efficiency, energy efficient appliances, washer dryers in the units, um, and there will also be outdoor recreation space on the second and seventh floor terraces. Next, please. The owner is also planning to install mesh network nodes on the roof to help grow neighborhood access to high quality broadband and Wi-Fi service at low cost. The network would deliver signal throughout the new building's units, plus NYCHA properties, um, Williamsburg and Sumner houses to the south, as well as the broader East Williamsburg, Bushwick and Bedford Stuyvesant communities. Next, please. 
This slide shows the proposed building in context uh, located um, at an intersection that supports the added density. Next, please. Uh, community board one um, recommended approval with conditions that the owner is happy to meet. Um, and that concludes our presentation. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, regarding the affordable housing units, uh, what is the qualifying income for prospective households based on household size, the anticipated rents based on the number of bedrooms, and the distribution of units by bedroom size? Uh, so we had a slide that shows the, um, the income levels, and that's the, I believe it's the first page of the appendix, page 15. Um, and we had an earlier slide. Um, slide nine. Um, that shows the proposed bedroom mix and monthly rents for those MIH units. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, given community concerns about displacement and the prevalence of rent burdened households, please identify what marketing strategies would be used in the tenant selection process to ensure the highest level of participation from communities are such one, especially residents who are rent burdened or at risk of displacement. And would such a marketing strategy start off with a financial literacy campaign to help qualify area residents for the lottery? So this is Frank Lang. St. Nick's is going to be the administering agent to do the rent up, lease up, and the uh, ongoing certification for any of the, the affordable units in the building. Um, obviously, this, these nine units um, are significantly smaller than the project that I just spoke on a few minutes ago. However, uh, St. Nick's has an ongoing program, and so we do expect to do the same kind of distribution and community notification to allow and inform people. We will also bring this up to add our ongoing financial literacy classes that are going on to make sure that people are aware because it is in a tremendous incentive for people to understand budgeting and credit when they know that, that it's important for them to get into these projects. Great, thank you. Uh, this site is in close proximity to the East Williamsburg industrial business area. The Williamsburg neighborhood has seen ongoing displacement and replacement of local businesses by primarily residential developments. What consideration would be given to providing accommodating businesses uh, at risk of displacement based on known developments and or those that might be at risk of displacement from the industrial area that would be, would be permitted in the proposed commercial space, such as small contractors and or art music studios? Right, so the owner appreciates the interest in having tenants that will be diverse and that serve the character of the neighborhood. Um, the, and the proposed development would replace only a passive auto and truck parking commercial use on the development site. The gas station within the project area is expected to continue. Um, and the owner would welcome tenants uh, operating a hardware store, artist supply store, jewelry or metal craft shop, um, contractor's establishment or art music or dance studio. And um, potential tenants will be sought with the help of a future partnership with North Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce and Western Brooklyn Industrial Development Corporation. Thank you. Um, I think you touched on this a little bit, but it's Borough President Adams' policy to promote renewable energy resources. Maybe somebody's got to get muted because we're having too much feedback. It's all set? Okay. Uh, it's Borough President Adams' policy to promote renewable energy resources and focus on advancing a sustainable future in Brooklyn. It's also his policy to promote stormwater runoff practices 
What consideration has been given possibly in cooperation with the DEP, the Mayor's Office of Sustainability, NYSERDA or NIPA, to the incorporation of blue, green or white roofs and installation of solar panels and or roof mounted grid connected batteries or, or rainwater retention? Yeah, our slide 10 showed the sustainable features that we, we're uh, going to include in the new building. Um, and those include solar panels as required by the building code. Um, it is a relatively small site, but uh, the owner is trying to take advantage of as many of the sustainable features that would be appropriate for development of this size. Thank so I would just add that on the small on the small rooftop, a combination of solar panels and plantings will help with stormwater runoff issues. Okay. Some of the greening. And I would encourage you to contact DEP in terms of the rain gardens that uh, you know absorbing water before it gets to uh, the out um, the plant you know and um, the water pollution control plant that would be appreciated. Thank you. Uh, it's Borough President Adams' policy to maximize quality jobs for Brooklynites. So please outline what steps will be taken to ensure the inclusion and participation of minority and women-owned business enterprises and or local business enterprises in the construction process. So for the local hiring opportunities at the small building, we're looking forward to working with the St. Nick's workforce development team um, which has ongoing qualified, you know, placement and job development programs. In addition to working with organizations like Evidco that can connect us to MWBE firms. Excuse me, Evergreen is now the name of the organization. Um, and other organizations in North Brooklyn that, that work with minority and business enterprises for contracting. Thank you. Uh, we remind web viewers who wish to testify that you must message your request to all panelists in the WebEx chat. Remarks are limited to three minutes and we'll now call on speakers. No speakers? Any speakers in the course room? Courtroom? With all speakers being called, Richard, would you like to close out the item? All right, calendar item number two is closed. The hearing on these items is now closed. Thank you for participating in this blended public hearing. Borough President Adams will review the applications heard today and submit his recommendations to the City Planning Commission for further consideration. Borough President Adams would like to take this opportunity to remind you that the City Planning Commission will hold a public hearing on these items which will be announced at a later date. We'd also like to remind viewers that comments can be submitted by email to askeric at brooklynbp.nyc.gov. This hearing is now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>